What is going on guys, Mark here with Reaper Airsoft. Today we're going to take a look at the KAA, the Knight's Armament Stoner 96. Now this one is a little bit more custom than what you're going to see when you pull it out of the box. And the reason this is custom is because we weren't happy with the out of the box performance and quality. For $350 retail, it just was not making the grade. Overall out of the box, I'd rate this thing at a 5 out of 10. You can buy G&G, &G, Echo One, anything for a quarter of the price and outperform this gun all day long out of the box. And the reason I say that is it does come in at about 400 feet per second stock. But an 11.1 .1 light boat, about a 20C discharge, 1600 mile, you're at about 10 rounds per second. With a 7.4, you're at 8 if you're lucky. So performance wise, there just wasn't nothing there to even brag about. I would have been ashamed to even shoot it. And I would have been a little bit pissed off when I bought this if it was mine. Which is the reason we have it, because it just was not performing up the snuff of the customer. So, we did a little bit of work on the inside, and I wanted to give you guys a review of what you actually get when you pull this out of the box. Now, like I said, we did do some modification externally. We did an LE stock with buffer tube. Now, this is not a set stock. We, uh, we hand ground the buffer tube down. We got rid of the threading off the buffer tube that goes into the nut. And then we have three set screws here. I have normal screws and waiting for the set screws to come in, but this may not be the permanent setup. This is just to try it out to see if he likes it. The LE stock does give him a lot more options in position. It does give him a lot more options in which actual stock he wants to put on this with the M4 buffer tube. So it frees up a lot of options. And the original stock itself wasn't all that great. It wasn't nothing right at home, but um, there was a set screw that held it into the main body with a sliding tube and another set screw to lock the sliding tube into place. Now, the sliding tube actually functions off of a button release up top here. There's a little detent that would hit these notches, and this detent looked like it was hand ground because it didn't fit nothing. It didn't lock in secure. And even with the set screws both tightened down all the way, this stock would still wobble. This is a piece of crap. I don't know how Classic Army even let this through the factory. I don't know why Knight's Armament would even put their logo on this gun with the way this gun came out of the factory. Um, Another piece that wobbled like the SOB was the front sight post. Um, this thing wobbled so bad that it made the front sight useless. Especially when you shot it, you could see it wobble back and forth with every shot. So that was something that we actually took off. Front sight post actually stood up about this high. It was kind of big, bulky, especially in comparison to the rear flip up. You know, the rear flip up would sit here, the front would flip up, sit up here. So it was a little bit off. Um, and it wasn't really accurate the way it was set up, so we got rid of it. We were managed to tighten this down a little bit, but as you can see, it still has some wobble there. So, unfortunately, we couldn't get rid of it all. Um, you know, externally, that was about it that we did for upgrades because the main center portion of the gun is pretty solid. There is no complaints there. The stock plate itself does remove. I know the Ares version has a replaceable stock plate to it. I'm not sure if the Classic Army version does. This was just a quick fix to see. If this is going to be what we're going towards um, and like I said it does remove it takes a simple set screw in the back you undo, undo the set screw here in the bottom and then a little lever in the back if you hit this lever after the set screw is gone you can actually slide the whole plate down and back off the gun which is nice because it makes the rest of the breakdown on the main assembly of the gun easy this this little lever down here there it is this little lever here actually releases and a whole lower section of this gun slides straight off the back um, there is a detent, a little the housing here you have to remove, which is for the BB feeding tube for the mag. Um, other than that, you know, once you get that out, it slides out pretty easy. Get you access to the quick chain spring guide and the internals of the gearbox. And you notice it's running a standard M4 AR pistol grip, so we're running a version two motor in here. Uh, we'll go over what we did inside to get it to where we wanted to get it, uh, but first let's go over the rest of it. Um, top rail we have plenty of room for sights which I think that he's going to run an optic on it which is why we didn't need the front post. We have plenty of rail up front here. He's got rail covers already on the side and his foregrip and bipod on the bottom. So there's plenty of space for you to do any of your lasers, flashlights, pistols or even a pec boxes which I think we're going to end up going to on this one. Now when it comes to the uh, front end of this gun this tube right here is what houses your battery. We'll show you that here as I break down the front end. The front end all does come out. We move some of this stuff out of the way. But if you press this button right here, it actually releases the front front outer barrel. Front outer barrel slides straight out, so you can do barrel swaps. I don't know if they plan on doing different barrel lengths and everything else, but if you're going to do a different barrel length, you can always do a different inner barrel, which actually comes out pretty quick too. This is a M249 barrel hop-up setup, so you can probably set up multiple systems where if you want it to run shorter that one day and longer the next day, 
with it being quick change, it gives you that option to do it. Now, as I said, when it comes down to the battery assembly itself, the battery does go in here. Um, this tube itself looks like it is superficial. It doesn't really offer support anywhere on the front. It's just there, so we could probably remove that tube and hold the bat bigger battery inside the housing itself and not have an issue. We may do that or we may go to a peck box, still not sure yet, um, but the options are there. Now, reassembly is pretty quick and easy. You actually push these two tabs together, that'll pop up. Your secondary dust cover pops up. You take your barrel assembly, your inner barrel assembly, and your tab. There's a little tab there, as you guys know if you run an M249s tab goes straight down so it locks into place where the T tube comes in. So slip it over the air some nozzle, pop into place, outer barrel, take your outer barrel, line it up with your inner barrel, which is normally the biggest issue you have. Slide it straight back, lower your dust covers, hit the release button, pop it back in place and it's pretty solid. Um, with it locked into place, the outer barrel is pretty solid. There is no real big wobble to the outer barrel. It's just a front sight post that wobbles, which is pinned into place, and this lower buffer tube that wobbles. Well, not even a buffer tube, but this lower tube that wobbles. Um, and that, like I said, that that seems like it's superficial. It's just there for design. Nothing really functional about it. We could probably get rid of it and have more battery room inside. Um, as for the mag itself, now this was another thing that left us with some disappointment. And as you guys can see, is uh, it does say Classic Army right on the side of it here. This dust cover, this little cover here to fill the BBs up, this thing pops open constantly. No matter what we do, no matter what you're trying to do, if you hit it wrong, if you bump it wrong, it will pop open. Um, the mag itself priced retail around $90. I don't feel it's worth it just because you can get M249 mags, and I heard you can modify them to run with this gun. So you can take this 1500 round $90 mag and run an M249 mag, I think which are 2500 rounds, and I think I've seen them as low as 50 bucks retail so you can run almost twice the capacity at half the price. Um, the coolest feature to it though is if you take the snap hair, some BB stone too, if you take the snap hair off the keychain, there you go. Take the zipper, undo the zipper. More BBs there. I'm gonna have BBs everywhere. Underneath is your 9.6 volt battery which powers the mag itself. And then as you can see, there's this little plunger thing here. When you pull this plunger thing down, it actually lowers the floor of the mag itself to make more room for BBs as you load them. And then as the BBs are used and you're shooting them out, the floor of it comes up and it kind of creates less of a rattle. You don't get that big as you're running with it. So that's a nice feature about the mag. Standard off, auto, and on. Um, Obviously, you're going to be in auto, that way it feeds as you shoot, not constantly feeding when you don't need to shoot and you don't burn it out. It actually slips into the gun pretty easy, too. Uh, mag, making mag chains extremely easy. Now I'm doing this backwards, we're not really looking, but see if I can get it to go. Slides in. You can take this little lever here. This pops out. Your feed tube, which is hiding from me, pops right into the hole. And it's actually held in by a little ball bearing that holds it there. The lever slides over to keep it pressed against the gun. Now, it's not the most secure thing in the world, but when it comes to mag changes, it definitely makes it a lot easier, especially when you can see what you're doing. Um, so, you know, you figure shoot, 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 mag change. Pull that, pop the lever out, hit the lever release, mag's out, you're going into your next one. Um, so it does make it a lot easier to swap mags during the middle of combat not have to worry about it. And it's the same with the hop-up adjustment. You can sit here and you can adjust your hop-up while you shoot without having to deal with stopping, open the dust cover up, and really looking at what you're doing. You can pop it all open, continue to shoot, and adjust your hop as you're shooting. That way you know you're hitting where you're going. Because unfortunately there's no semi-auto, which gets us to the internals. You have safe and full auto. Like I said, safe and full auto for this gun, right off original stock, classic army stock motor, gear set, piston. We were hitting 10 rounds per second with an 11-1 LiPo, which was just not desirable. It left a lot to be desired, which is, like I said, why we did the upgrades. Um, Motor-wise, we went with a Lonex uh, A1. That way we had a lot more a lot more room to work with if he wants to do a spring swap or if he wants higher or slower speeds, we can adjust it from there. Went with a Super Shooter 13-1 gear set. That way we're kicking them out now. Um, we went we went from 10 rounds per second at 400 feet per second to 25 rounds per second at 400 feet per second. 
We also did a piston swap. We went to a full steel tooth piston instead of the poly tooth piston that came with it. The rest of it we left alone, except for the wiring. The wiring was a joke. Um, went small to me up connector extension to another small to me a connector into an old tube fuse and then back to a micro switch just too many connectors together in one series a lot of resistance it definitely contributed to the gun firing at such a slow rate um, the motor was really nothing to be you know nothing special there nothing to be amazed by the motor so with the new wiring we put a fire control unit in there since there is no semi-auto we put an FCU in there he has the option of running safe two round to 12 round burst or just full auto functionality. So he has the options now to do and meet any field requirements if they do semi auto games, etc. etc. It makes it more of a multi purpose weapon instead of just one. Um, some of the other things that I really, really liked was the main weight of the gun, the feel of the gun. When you shoulder this gun, it is 10.5 pounds out of the box, so it lets you know you're holding a heavy gun, which is why he's got the quarter up and a bipod on it. Uh, unfortunately, there's no sling points on this gun at all. There was nothing on here for a sling mount that I've seen that I noticed. So, with the LE stock, he at least gets a rear sling mount. We're probably going to have to run a rail sling adapter up on top or on the sides or on the rails or something just to try and help ease the burden of carrying this thing through longer Milsim games. Um, it does have charging handle, which is non functional. I haven't seen anything really functional about that. It doesn't move anything inside or outside. Overall, you know, the gun is, it's okay. Is it worth 350 brand new out of the box without upgrades? No, I don't believe it is unless you're a collector or you really, really love the, the, the design, the looks of it. Um, and that's what it drew him to it was the looks of it over, you know, the standard two, M249 M2, and the other versions of any of the LMGs he's seen. Now, should you stay away from this gun? No. This gun, for most people, if you guys have a tech or you know how to upgrade and how to work on it, it is a standard version 2 almost set up inside. It takes all version 2 parts from what I can tell. Like I said, the piston head is the only thing that's a little bit different. It is an aluminum piston head. It seems a little bit bigger than the standard version 2 piston head, but so does the cylinder. The nice thing is, is the air cell nozzle, the cylinder head, the cylinder and the piston head, you don't really have to touch. The air cell nozzle is an O-ringed air cell nozzle, so you're not getting too many leaks from that. The cylinder head is an aluminum O-ring cylinder head and we weren't getting any leaks from there. As well as the piston, the piston held its compression really good. So compression wise there wasn't an issue. Performance wise, rounds per second, there was definitely an issue and that's what we addressed here. Um, the piston head does have a bushing set, that way it allows the spring, the, the spin is it's compressed. And the spring guide is a version 2 ball bearing spring guide, so there's a lot less tension on the spring, a lot less stress on the spring. So your spring life should last a lot longer than a standard setup. Um, internally, like I said, micro switch trigger, which is why we went to a MOSFET setup. That way we don't have to worry about burning that thing out. And just kind of built it to be a little more a little more intimidating on the fields, which it should do now. He is using this for Milsim events, so this does give him a little bit better of an edge than 10 rounds per second. So we're gonna we're gonna keep modifying it until he gets exactly where he likes it, and then we're gonna call it a day. Um, as I said, we are hitting about 24 rounds, 25 rounds per second, we're 11 1 now, so it's definitely where it needed to be. Overall, after upgrades, I give it a 9 out of 10. Still have some complaints that we can address as we go, but it has potential, guys. It really does. And expect to put some money into this thing to get it to where you want it to be when you buy it, if you buy it. Um, but that's the nice thing about it is it does have a lot of compatibility from front to back. It does leave you with the room and options to go. If you guys have any questions on it, please leave a comment below. I'll answer them the best I can. Like I said, I did pull it all apart completely. Um, did did take a little bit of time to look over the internals to see what it offered and everything else. So I'll answer what I can. Um, and any other questions, I'll try and hit up Z-Shot, which I think is the distributor for these now. I want to say, I don't remember correctly, but I, if I have to, I can find out. Um, so if you like, comment, share, subscribe, uh, and as always, call your hits, guys.